just as a sign of complete surrender it's over to him tonight hallelujah father it's all about you tonight God hallelujah, hallelujah father we surrender everything we have hallelujah we love you tonight Lord hallelujah thank you God for what you've done so in love with you can't make it without you no no hallelujah come on sing this with us Sing it out. Well, I, yes, I do surrender. 
Come on, we relinquish all control. Over to you, Father. Come on. Maybe when you didn't even want yourself, you may have not even felt like living, but a God who loved you. Hallelujah. He accepted us. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you for your mercy, God. We bless you, God, for taking us, for loving us. God, we love you in return. Come on, if you love the Lord tonight, just shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. The ushers are going to make their way up at this time. I'm going to go and pray over the tithe and offering for tonight and just continue to worship the Lord. Go deeper into his presence. He's a mighty God. So let's just all go to the Lord in prayer together right now. Father, we bless you. Thank you, God, for where we are up even to this point, God. We rejoice in your presence. 
God, we praise and worship with expectancy, anticipation. God, that you would just continue to reveal your presence, your glory, God, amongst us tonight. God, I pray we position ourselves for an outpouring of your spirit. God, bless right now the tithe and the offering. Thank you for blessing us, God, that we can give, God, and see the kingdom further out through lives being saved, God. Have your hand upon everything that's done the rest of tonight. We give all the glory and praise to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen and amen. The ushers are going to make their way through right now. If you're able to remain standing with us, we just have another song as we continue to further our worship. Come on and worship him in spirit and in truth tonight. Hallelujah. Come on. He's a mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God who's majestic and powerful in all of his ways. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Come on with grateful, glad hearts. We just worship you, Father. Simply for who he is. Glory. Glory to your name. Come on, let's sing it together. Says I worship. Come on. I worship you in the spirit. Come on, he is the truth. Hallelujah. I worship you in the truth. My love for you. My love for so you. Say this right now. Your majesty is so amazing. Your majesty is so amazing. Amazing. And that's exactly what you are. And that's what you in are. In my life. To me. Hallelujah. Come on in, in your presence. That's where I desire to be.
You're seated. Just give God a great hand of praise, and you can be seated tonight in his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated at this time, and it's the pleasure I have to introduce our couple of specials for tonight. First, I want to introduce Sister Cheryl McFadden is going to come and bless us through song tonight. After she's finished, Silent Witness is going to come. They're going to bless and minister to us, and our bishop is going to come with the word tonight. So let's just do, come on, a great thing. Put our hands together and just praise and worship along with them and really support these ladies tonight. Let's continue to worship God. This is um, a visiting friend of mine. She, throughout the 12 or more years that I've been at the praising place, she's tipped in and out with her husband. Terrence James is sitting back there, so let's welcome her. She's a member of um, I think Christian, faith, Christian, faith, uh, uh, Christian Faith Assembly um, Church with Pastor Threat, and she's been a member there for a number of years. And by the way, Pastor Tucker, Pastor Threat asked me, tell me, said to me, to say the hello to you when, he, when I saw him last time. But she's here to worship with us tonight. So she's on the praise and, she's on the praise and worship team at her church as well.
splendor of the king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light in darkness tried to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our god sing with me how great is our god all oh, will see how great how great is our god how great is our god sing with me how great is our god all oh, will see how great how great is our god ace to age you stand and time is in his hand beginning at the end beginning at the end the god that three and one father spirit son the lion and the lamb the lion and the lamb how great is our god sing with me how great is our god oh we'll see how great how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing, how great is our God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, just need to share a little something with you right now while Silent Witness is getting on the stage. God gave me the opportunity to start a group called Silent Witness 16 years ago. And now, 16 years later, probably 500 performance later, I've gotten the opportunity to see so many kids and, and grown-ups learn sign language and, and, and get the passion that I have for it. Tonight's kind of sentimental to me because I'm actually giving it up and I'm turning it over to someone in capable hands, Latrice. It's time for me to retire and pass it on. And I'm just so excited that my legacy is going to go forward. <laughs> so y'all get behind these kids and support them, okay? Thank you. Lift your hands as we celebrate the greatness of our God. He's great. 
great and he's greatly to be praised.
Praise the Lord. I, ju I just say, Sister Luann going to have about the shortest retirement in history. First of all, she didn't tell me nothing about retiring. I'm going to tell you, we don't retire at the praising place. We refire and reposition, but we don't retire. Just kidding, Sister Luann. God bless you and those that are working with Silent Witness. God bless you for that ministry. Isn't it awesome? Awesome, awesome. And if you would stand, I want to visit with you for a minute. Then we're going to go right into the word for this evening. If you would stand. And uh, thank you for coming and contributing, my sister and your husband. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing your ministry here at the Praise in Place. Let, let me just give a special shout out tonight to Pastor Marlon Harris and First Lady, Sister Alicia. Come on, pastors of Freedom Reign. Come on, they're our kids. Who said you can't go home again? Come on, these are our kids. Come on, we thank God for them. Amen, 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 amen. Started a ministry uh, in February and doing awesome. And we commend you and we thank you and we honor you. Bless you. Thank you for coming. Surprise me sliding in here tonight, sitting on the back row like strangers do. I said, come on up here. He said, you know how we are. We like sitting on the back. So uh, I, I know the Holy Ghost can get back there and find them. I ain't worried about him. Amen. And we're just thankful. Brother Marley, you want to say anything? Huh? <laughs> Praise God. You don't preach out today, huh? You just, <laughs> I know he's preached strong. Uh, he, I was in a uh, funeral where he was uh, officiating uh, last, last week. Was it last week? Excuse me. Time flies. Uh, you know, I can't remember. I think it was last week. He did an awesome job. Tremendous man of God. Of course, you know that here uh, with us for years ministering. And we just uh, continue to bless and lift them up. Amen? Amen. Thank God for their ministry and what they're doing. Helping in the community. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we had teams out today at, at the Speedway. Well, not today, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whenever. And uh, in campers and tents. And uh, uh, they, they are, are recuperating. And we had dance teams out today uh, in other ministries. Thank God that, that you can say, well, go on over there and bless them. Go on over there. You know that we ain't going to get all selfish and jealous. Hello, your gift's, your gift's too good to stay in the house. Hello, your gift ought to work somewhere besides the praise in place. If this is the only place you can get anointed, you ain't got much. <laughs> Amen. Now, your gift, your gift is to, of course, help and support. But I told you this morning, you know, what God will do is you may, you come in here and bless the house, and God will open doors for you beyond the house. Amen. Amen, amen. So we just bless you. Don't forget, uh, of course, uh, at the end of service, if, if you can give to Guatemala Missions, we're going to, you know, keep that door open uh, so we can continue to bless. We've got two teams going, one to an orphanage and one to medical missions. So you, you bless the medical missions. They, they really need some extra help right now. And uh, don't forget special prayer Friday night from 6 until 7. It was awesome this past Wednesday. I'm telling you, I, 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 Lord have mercy. Amen. So just awesome to see what is going on uh, here at the Praising Place and glad that you are part of it and uh, we just bless you we're here to uh, enhance and further stimulate amen what what you already have stir up the gift of God that is within you and uh, I told you last Sunday night yeah you know my gear I have one it's wide open you know I've had through the years people say well you need to just pull back off the throttle a little, a little bit you know I, I can't do that I burn up more brakes that way you know, trying to hold back. I, I, but I don't want you to misinterpret, you know, just because maybe I have a faster pace and seem to be preaching for an earthquake all the time, that I'm not trying to educate you and inform you and enlighten you. I told you that we can't operate at the speed of knowledge. We've got to operate at the speed of revelation. So I'm going to give you some revelation stuff tonight. Amen. Uh, I said, God, I wish I'd have learned all this stuff early on. I don't know why now, 31 years almost into ministry, full-time ministry, uh, pastoring 16 years this month. Thank you very much for the applause. <laughs> uh, Lord, where has the time gone? Amen. Uh, but uh, why didn't I learn some of this early on? But, but here it is now, and I'm going to share some of this with you that I believe if you'll listen with spirit ears, 
Come on, you listen with spirit ears. It will change your perspective and your perception when you come to the house of God. Whether it be praise in place, freedom reign, wherever you, you come from. We, you go to the house of God with a whole different mindset. When you realize you ain't just going to hear a preacher, you're coming to get a word. And it don't matter who the preacher is, it's the word that does the work. Well, I say it don't matter who the preacher is, uh, it, it does kind of, sort of. Uh, you know, God can't speak to a donkey, but I wouldn't be wild about hearing him very, every Sunday. <laughs> Amen. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to Matthew chapter number 13. I know it ain't on the screen, so y'all don't panic. You, uh, I, I got you with Mark chapter 6. Uh, we'll go to Mark chapter 6 in a moment. We're going to start out here with Matthew chapter number 13, only one verse. And we'll tie this all together. I'm preaching to a point tonight. I'm preaching to something in the atmosphere. And when I feel that time is right, then I'm going to put... You, I know it don't make sense now because you think, well, what are you going to put on us? You'll find out when I get there. I believe as a spiritual authority, I can put one amen. No, mm -hmm. Be a little cautious because I, I, I want you to be cautious. I don't want you just to take my word for it. I want you to take the word of God for it. You're going to see that the man of God can put a thing on you. The, the authority in the house can put a blessing on you. Anybody believe that? I'm, it's going you know, to change your perspective. Um, Matthew chapter 13 and verse number 44. I believe that tonight is part 35. Who's keeping score over there? I heard a yes. Oh, y'all, that's because y'all got notes. Part 35 in this series. Uh, <laughs> you go ahead and laugh. It's funny, ain't it? It is funny. Uh, got two more to go. 37 parts, and then I'm going to preach a series. Well, what about me? Well, what about me? I, uh, this church ain't going to get bigger unless I get bigger. i got to start with me, but we'll, we'll get there. I'm going to get uh, some deep stuff into you tonight. Matthew 13, 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid, not lost, but hid. God will hide things. God hides it, but Proverbs says that, that it is the pleasure of the king to unearth it or to seek it out. God will find out how, how bad you want the treasure. So he'll hide the treasure in a field. Ah, and here Jesus said that a man found a treasure in a field, and he sells everything he has, takes the money, and buys the field to get the treasure. So I, I liken that unto, I am the field, and I got a treasure in me. Don't get messed up looking at the field. Look at my treasure. Just because I ain't got a town don't mean I ain't got a treasure in the field. And you don't just, you don't just take the field on my good days. You got to take the field on its bad days too. When I ain't clicking on all cylinders. Have you had those Sundays yet, Pastor Marlon? When you didn't feel like you were hitting on much. Thank God for, for, for favor. <laughs> Amen. And some, some blessings on credit sometime. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I told him this morning. Now stay with me. Stay with me. I had a lady meet me in the office one time. And uh, she, can I meet with you? She ain't been to church in six to nine months. But I want to meet with you. I said, you got ten minutes. Talk on the way in. Come in the door talking. <laughs> and uh, she comes in and she says, I've got, I've got uh, to have surgery and I want you to be there. She said, now I hadn't been here in six to nine months, but I've been watching John Hagee. I said, well, let John Hagee come see you in the hospital. <laughs> you, you, you don't just take me when you got surgery and then leave me the rest of the time. You, I told you today, you don't just take the field when I'm preaching you slap happy. And then ignore me when I got to bring some correction and some structure. You got to take the field on its good days and its bad days if you're going to get the treasure. Now, now, with that as a backdrop, let's go to Mark chapter 6, verse 1. And Jesus went out from thence and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this that's given to him? That with, with his hands or by his hands or from his hands, all these mighty works are coming. They couldn't argue the works. They just didn't understand how such a treasure could be in a field that they grew up with. Then they started trying to intellectualize and rationalize. Is not this the carpenter? You know, you've got a shop right down the road. Surely God couldn't use somebody from Nazareth. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Now, you know, he's the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judah, Simon. 
And his sisters are here with us. And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and his own house. And he could not there do, do uh, mighty works, many mighty works, save laid hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he goes around villages and his teaching. They marvel at mighty works, but now he has to quit his mighty works. Because they get into a spirit of dishonor and disrespect. They stop accepting the field. And when you stop accepting the field, the treasure doesn't come. So it doesn't matter tall, dark, and handsome, or short, ugly. Whatever field stands up in this pulpit, you honor the field if you're going to get the treasure. No matter if you like the way they sing, the way they dress, the way they move or not, if you're going to get a treasure out of them, you got to honor the field. Somebody say the spirit of honor is coming back to the house. You may be seated. You may be seated. Let's get in, into this. I want to start out by reminding you of something that I hope you already know. But, but when you talk about the church, you are talking about a spiritual entity. I know that the church is made up of people. Okay? Dysfunctional sometimes. Irritable sometimes. Wake up on the wrong side of the bed sometimes. Yeah, uh, cantankerous. Mm, yeah, but God uses people. The, the, the people, guess what, the, uh, that God's going to use, guess what, would be the same people the devil was using. That, that both of them need a vessel through which to do their work. Uh, are, you, are, you, are you here? Come, somebody say, I'm here. I'm here. So, so watch this. That, the angels were not singing. They may sing like angels, but they were not angels. Angels are not preaching to you tonight. We are clay earthen vessels. We are fields. But in the field there is the treasure. And when you dishonor the field, you will not be able to retrieve the treasure. So are you going to be a land survey or a land surveyor or a treasure hunter? When you come up in here, it doesn't matter how long the man or the woman of God has been preaching. You ought to come up in here and say, you know what? I'm not looking at the field. I'm trying to find the treasure. So that whether they've been preaching 31 years or whether they are preaching their inaugural sermon, that you come in here with a spirit of honor on you and a spirit of respect and say, if God was God enough to call them and if God is God enough to anoint them, then I'm going to receive from them. Somebody should shout yes oh yes so God uses people songs come through people prophecy comes through people word of knowledge word of wisdom comes through people guess what people anoint you with oil people lay hands on you come on it is all about people the treasure is in the people so understand that while we are flesh there is a spiritual power behind the flesh Come on, this sounds like it's tutorial and instructional, and, and to a degree it is, but I'm trying to show you something. That behind me, there is something that pushes me, something that propels me, something that equips me, something that empowers me. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? That there is an unseen force uh, that is guiding me and directing me. Uh, it's not by might. And it's not by power. It's by the Spirit of the Lord. Guess what? The Bible says that He is the vine. We are the branches. And it's coming through Him to me. And guess what? Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. And apart from Him, I can do nothing. But as long as I'm grafted in, connected, wrapped up, tied up, tangled all up in Jesus, then I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Somebody shout yes are you getting it let me see your hand so if you are one of those highly intellectual people you're going to struggle with some stuff thank God for simple people like me that I know I don't know it all I accept I don't know it all but I believe in what I don't know all the other simple people raise your hand That there's stuff that I have to accept by faith. Listen to Hebrews. Through faith we understand. 
not through book learning. Come on. Not through knowledge, not through degrees, not through diplomas, but I simply receive it by faith. And I, I promise you that if you're one of those that you've got to rationalize, you've got to compute, you've got to decipher, you've got to figure everything out, you're going to struggle in the area of faith. Because there's some stuff in that book ain't going to make no sense to your intellect. And I got news for you. Some of you are trying to understand the things of God. God never, and I remember when he put this in my heart, he never called me to understand him. He called me to believe him. And sometimes God will tell you something you can't understand just to stretch your faith a little bit more. Oh, so what, what does the Bible say? Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. There's some things in this book that, that I'm not going to be able to grasp. His ways are past my ways and his thoughts past my thoughts and his ways are past finding out. Watch this. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. It's foolishness unto him. It's not going to compute. It's not going to register. Come on. Because these things are spiritually discerned. There are some things that even carnal people, unsaved people, can apply out of the Bible. Sowing and reaping. That ain't just for Christian people. If a sinner come in here and write a hundred dollar check, God gonna bless it. So come on, sinners. Pay up. We'll cash it. We ain't got no saved bank account and no sinner bank account. It all goes into one account. <laughs> come on, clap on that one. <laughs> and guess what? There's some things that work even if you ain't saved. You ready? Watch this. If you want a friend, show yourself friendly. You ain't even got to be saved for get, to get that one to work for you. Put a smile on your face. You know, be polite, be cordial. And that'll work in any arena. Watch this. This, this however, gets, and, we're, and we're graduating to more spiritual applications. Love your neighbor as yourself. So we start graduating into spiritual matters. There's natural matters, just weights and balances. Ain't nobody going to go to your job and they feel like you're charging them more than it's worth. But then there's a spiritual side. Somebody say there's a spiritual side. Watch this. Some people, they get it by the letter of the law, but they don't get it by the spirit of the law. Uh, watch what. Look, look, I want you to get this. I'm going to slow down so you can get it. We have those that they can quote scripture just like a preacher can. But they don't know how to work it. Because they got the letter of the law, but they don't have the spirit. Come on, anybody understand me? Let me see your hand. The Bible said the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Even they that worship, you can come in here and raise your hand and carry on like everybody else. But they that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. And there are people, and I know a few of them, that they can quote scripture, but as hateful as a snake. Because they know the letter of the law, but they don't know. They quote Bible on love, but full of hate. Come on, help me preach somebody. <laughs> Y'all know the same people, don't you? Because they know the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law. They draw nigh with their mouth, but their heart is far from God. So it's not enough for you to commit this to memory, but never walk it out in a spiritual arena. Okay, let me go deeper. Just because you know the definition of faith, and you know some faith, by, some faith verses out of the Bible, does not mean that you walk by faith, or that you are living by faith, or that you're asking in faith, nothing wavering, because there has to be a spiritual application. And I'm all about the word. I, I am a word preacher. Don't give me hyperboles. Don't give me all of this fiction and fable. Tell me the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Get up in my face. Hold no punches. My soul is on the line. I don't need nothing watered down. I don't need nothing compromised. I, I need some truth. But let me show you how this thing operates. There are people not as blessed as we are. In one sense, but they work in the Bible 
Like we ain't ever worked it. Come on, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm gradually working you into something. We got Bibles in every room of the house. Ten versions. The ABC, the DEF, the HIJ, LMNOP, we got all of them. We got, every, we got Greek, we got Hebrew. Come on, got Bible on your cell phone. Come on, got Bible in your glove box. Got Bible in your locker at the workplace. Yeah, got all that stuff, but ain't working none of it. Because you, uh, you're not hearing me. You can know the letter of the law, but not know the spiritual application. And yet there are places tonight that guess what? If they do have a Bible, they got to keep it in a closet. If they do have a Bible, they got to keep it concealed and hidden because they live in oppressive nations. They live up under dictatorship. They live in predominantly Muslim or Islam or, or Buddhist communities where if you are a Christian, you could lose your liberty. You could be put in jail or even lose lose your life so guess what they read their bible in secret and the church is not open the church is underground and they have to go from place to place because if the government finds out there's a church they will disband it and they will close it and they will put the pastor in jail and yet while they don't have near the services as far as number that we have and they don't have as many meeting times as we have and they don't have a bible by the bed and a bible on the china cabinet and they don't have a bible on the dinner table and they don't have a bible in the glove box and they don't have a bible on the phone guess what they're laying hands on the sick they're casting out devils hey they're taking regions because we haven't got it in our spirit we got it in our head But we don't have it yet in our spirit. And I am not anti-Bible. Study to show yourself approved. Huh? The word have I hid in my heart. The word is more important than food is to my body. The word was found and I did eat them. The word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Heaven and earth shall pass. But my word shall never pass away. The grass withers, the flower fades. All of that, all of that. Jesus said, man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I'm all about studying the scripture. But there are people that they have it rationally, but not relationally. They know it academically. But they know it in the social arena. They know it philosophically. They know the psychological aspects and benefits of the Bible and going to church and having a Christian environment. But Yet, for some unknown reason, they haven't had an encounter, a face-to-face -face encounter with the true and living God. But there comes a time when he's got to be more than an equation. He's got to be more than something you read in a textbook. He has to be personal. He has to be real in your life. Oh, taste and see. Somebody shall taste and see. There are some things. You're not going to understand it till you get involved with it. Love is one of those things. Listen to Oprah and Dr. Phil all you want to. Until you're in love, you ain't going to know how to work that thing. All these would-be prospective parents. Read your Dr. Spock all you want to. Talking about my child will go to bed at 8 o'clock sharp. That's what you think. I promise you're going to have a night at 12 o'clock. That goo goo ga ga. Some stuff you don't know. And the world, listen, I'm talking about the world. The world don't care that you don't know. They got enough sense to know once you get in there, you'll figure it out. Football. Lord knows. Most of the women go to football games don't have a clue. What's a first down? A first what? First down. I don't know what a first down is, but they go. And guess what? The Panthers don't care. Give me the money. Get your ticket. Put your rear end in the seat. 
pay $30 for a hot dog and a Coke. We don't care. We, you'll, you'll figure it out, figure it out as you go. And I'm talking about in the club, okay? In the club, they don't care if you can dance or not. And the guy there checking ID, he don't say, throw me, show me how, how to drop it like it's hot. He, he, he don't ask you to, to give him some dance moves out in the parking lot before he lets you in. Y'all laughing. I hope that ain't vulgar. I just picked it up. I, I hope that ain't. I, I, do, I do know. I do, these ladies started singing. And I leaned over the first one. I said, that sounds like a little Jan and Dean to me. Y'all know from the 50s? Beach music type. I understand music from the 50s, the 60s, 70s, and a little of the 80s. But past that, I was saved. I quit listening. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here we go. I, I re, I'm telling you, I, I'm out of touch with some of this. Because I remember one day walking down the aisle back here and looked down and saw a CD, picked it up and said, Usher. I said, thank God at least they're listening to Christian music. I ain't kidding. I thought, Usher, hey, come out of church. Got to be saved. Till I heard him. I said, oh, Lord. Oh. <laughs> So, I, you know, I don't know all the, all the songs and the moves, okay, and the dance steps, okay? So I, but I'm telling you that they don't care. They'll let you come in, and they'll figure that you catch up as you go. Listen to me, and the same thing happens to church. There's some things, guess what? I didn't know how to work it till I got up in here and started oh, walking it out a little bit every day. I didn't know how to use my authority. I didn't, know how to, didn't know how to use the word of God. Come on, are, are you here? But the longer I'm, see, I didn't know how bad I needed to be saved till I finally got saved. And then I realized how heavy that load of sin was that was resting on my soul. See, I didn't know how bad I needed the Holy Ghost until I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And ain't a one of us can really explain the benefits I'm being filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, all I know is, guess what? I'm never going to scratch your intellect about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm never going to be able to answer all the questions. All I know is, even though I can't explain him, I believe him. I know that Jesus said in my name, they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents if they drink any deadly thing. It will not harm them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. I can't explain all that, but I believe it. Hey, Paul said, I would that you all spoke with tongues. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Forbid not to speak with tongues. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. When you don't know how to pray, the Spirit makes intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. And we're praying of mysteries. Come on, somebody. It is deep that is calling unto deep. We're building up ourselves in the most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost I, I don't understand how a black cow can eat green grass give white milk and yellow butter I, hey but I get in there with the geeting I, and I have to cut some grass every now and then I, and I don't understand how Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego went into the fire and come out without being burned but I believe it I, I don't understand how a fish can spit out tax money but I believe it I, I don't understand I, dear God how you can walk around a wall and not say a word and it fall I, I don't understand how an axe head could swim I, but even when I don't understand it I believe it with all of my heart <laughs> Lena would tell somebody I believe this thing let me tell you something else I didn't know how God could change my life so radically Till I started getting in this thing. And he starts affecting every layer and every facet of my life. I didn't know Christianity was about living. I thought Christianity was just about not dying. I thought that Christianity was stay out of hell free. Come on. I didn't know. Let me give you a Bible. I didn't understand that I could have life eternal, life everlasting, life more abundant. 
He that has the Son has life. Romans 6.22 But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, that in him I live, move, and have my being. But now I am seeing that I can take this Bible and it can affect me as a husband. It can affect me as a father. It just doesn't work only on Sunday when I'm in this church, but it'll radically change every day of my life. Somebody shout yes. yes. I'm going to tell you while I'm on it here that life constitutes growth. Are you here? If you ain't growing, there's something wrong. Something wrong. Hey, look at me. Had 520 in church today. I got 500 growing. Don't blame the cook. It ain't the cooking. If you ain't growing, something wrong with the kid. I shouldn't have said that because y'all quiet now. Y'all to be growing. Y'all to be maturing. Come on, y'all to be taking off and putting on, ceasing to do evil, learning to do well. Come on, y'all to be making some changes. You ought to be developing, maturing, and there ought to be some kind of sign of life come out of you. I know where I'm going. I hadn't lost my place. There ought to be some sign of life. The first thing that the doctor does when you are born, he checks to see if there is a life response coming out of you. And if you are not moving, if you are not crying, if you are not sighing or breathing, he's going to put the right hand of fellowship on the south of the border because you need to be shocked back to life. Now you ain't got to come in here and scream like I scream. You ain't got to sweat like I sweat. But I promise you somewhere there ought to be some life coming out of you. Hey, yes. Oh, you may not do it like I do it. But the Bible says that Aaron's rod budded once. My God, I've been some of your pastor for 16 years. You ain't budded yet. But every once in a while, you ought to come in with an amen. You ought to come in with a Hallelujah. Yeah. Numbers tells me in chapter 23 verse 20 that they knew the king was in the city because there was a shout. The king couldn't be in every place. But they knew what city the king was in based on the shout. And when somebody comes to this church, they ought to hear a shout that says the king is in the house. And we shout because God is good. We shout because he loads us down with benefits. But I shout to change an atmosphere I shout to change a tone I I shout to change a pace and if I don't feel it let me shout a little if I don't shout much I might not feel much but sometime I gotta push God's button by praising Him why don't we try it right now give God 10 seconds of crazy praise Watch it start shifting. Lean over and tell somebody it works. So here, 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 this is where I am. I am about activating. Somebody say activating. Activating. I'm about coming in line, coming in agreement, right? Proverbs says, watch this, that the curse shall not causeless come. Listen to me. There are some bad things you bring on yourself. I don't hear you. Bad choices, bad connections, bad hookups, bad relationships. What you sow, you're going to reap it. Hello? Hello? So, if the curse does not causeless come, then the blessing does not causeless come. God does not just say, well, I blessed you last Sunday, I'm going to get you this Sunday. Now, there's certain uniform blessings. He, all gave us, he gave us all breath in our body today. But this is beyond that. This is tapping into another arena. Where I was this morning, Deuteronomy 28, being the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. 
My enemy chased me one way, but flee seven ways. I'm trying to figure out as a, as a man, as a preacher, as a pastor, how to position myself and position us for another blessing. A blessing that I hadn't seen and ear hadn't heard, but the Spirit has revealed and said it's there. You see, studying this week, how that God told Joshua, no more manna. God said, for 40 years I gave you manna every morning. You didn't have to do nothing but just go pick it up. But God said, I ain't doing it no more. Now you get to choose what you're going to eat. For 40 years you had manna in the morning, manna in the noonday, manna when the sun goes down. You had manna a la king, manna casserole, manana pudding. You're going to get tired of it after a while. So now God says, wait a minute. Watch this. Now God says, it ain't on me no more. It's on you. So watch this. God says, you want corn? Sow it. Hey! You want tomatoes? Plant. Hey! You want some beef? Grow it. God said, now I am taking it off of me and I'm putting it on you. And I'm telling you as a church, you need to start making up your mind what you want from God and start sowing. Ah, ah, start sowing a seed Start sowing a word Into the atmosphere So that it can bring you back a heart Somebody shout I hear you You getting it The Old Testament patriarchs believed it They believed you could put a word on your house Stay with me. Listen to Noah. He spoke over Shem and Japheth. Spoke negative over Ham and his descendants because they left him uncovered. Look at Jacob. He blessed his sons. Look at how he got it from his father Isaac. How that Isaac said, I know I'm blind and I'm old, but I still got some power in me. Them bones, them bones. I got anointing in my bones. He said, if I speak a word, it's going to work. Listen, Jacob knew it. And Jacob said, if I disguise myself to look like my older brother, I can get a blessing that I ain't even entitled to. And when he finds out I deceived him, he ain't going to be able to take it back. And Esau said, wait a minute. Dad, you blessed the wrong one. He said, what I've spoken, I've spoken. Come on, are you listening? I'm telling you how to speak a word over your house. And Esau wept and said, Dad, don't you have another blessing on you? And even Jacob, whenever Rachel put a curse on Benoni, he reversed it by calling him Benjamin. Am I right about it? And how Joseph said, I want my daddy, I want, I want Manasseh and Ephraim's granddaddy to pronounce a blessing on him. I believe in the pronounced blessing of God. I believe that if God named it, I can name it. I know the name and claim it and all of that. People said, blab it, grab it. And I know to some degree it's been abused. But I'm not going to let go of it. Because if God named it, whether you like it or not, I'm going to name it. If God put it in the Bible, I don't care if all of you turn, turn your back and walk off. I'm going to be claiming the Bible. You hear what I said? If God promised household salvation, I'm going to name it and claim it. If God, if God promised healing for my body, I'm naming it and claiming it. If God promised to build a church and the gates of hell won't prevail against it, I'm naming it and claiming it. Uh, because what's this? God does not honor my word. God honors his word. And even though that treasure has to come out of a field, it doesn't lose its impetus. It doesn't lose its power when it comes across clay lips. When I speak it, it has the same impetus as though God himself. Don't think so. He said it won't return void. Am I in the Bible? I know it's way over your head, some of you. But God said it won't return void. It will accomplish. And the mind is not going to get this. Because we are into sensory perception. I am moved by what I feel. 
I'm moved by what I hear. The tempo of the music makes me stomp my feet, clap my hands. Am I right? Certain songs, him, somebody done another somebody wrong song or something. Well, you know, you know. I, somebody will get me right before church is out. I know that. There's a tear in my beer or something. You know that you know that 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 kind of stuff can make you oh, depressed and and you go to the, you go to the bar to, and the the, 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 the juke joints and they got the, the music all oh, depressing and, and and they got the lights low because they know the more depressed you get the more beer you're gonna drink you don't want to hear me so they want you depressed so they set an atmosphere of depression come on they they set an atmosphere huh that is you against the world. So they understand all of that. And we are sensory driven. But I got to tell you something. I'm part of another kingdom that is not sensory driven. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm part of this kingdom. But when you're born again, you become part of another kingdom. Oh, and you can't touch it. You can't say, Lo, it's here or there. For uh, guess what? The kingdom of God is within you. And it's not a touchable, tangible. It's not a visible, physical kingdom. It's invisible. It's unseen. It's untouchable. Uh, it's spiritual, but it is real. And what, if you're not careful, you will think that what happens here has no bearing on what happens there. And you will sort of take it as it is. And you'll think there ain't a thing I can do about it. I just got to put up with it. I just got to learn to live in this environment, this condition. But my Bible tells me it's first of all that which is natural. Then that which is spiritual. 1 Corinthians 15, 44 through 46. And we've got it wrong. We think it's spiritual first and then natural. No, no, no. What happens on the natural it unlocks the spirit. Come on church, help me. That I can do something something in the natural realm uh, that will impact the spirit world uh, oh watch the order Jesus said if you bind it on earth uh, then I'll bind it in heaven uh, but if you don't know how to bind it down here it won't ever be bound up there if you don't know how to loose it here you don't get it loosed up there he said if two of you shall agree on earth uh, on earth uh, then it'll be done in heaven uh, I'm telling you there's a word uh, that you can release into the atmosphere on this earth uh, that'll start shifting <laughs> Crazy, huh? Crazy, huh? The mind ain't gonna get this. But there is a spoken blessing. And I believe, if I know my Bible, and I ain't a rookie, I ain't a novice, if I know my Bible, I know that as the spiritual authority in the house. I can speak a word. That changes the tone. And the climate. This is what used to get me. This is why I'm still on partnership. It ain't about how good I preach. It's about how good you receive. I don't know if you're there yet, Pastor Marlon, but I've been there. I go home beat myself up. Maybe if I'd have preached better. Maybe if I'd have prayed more. Maybe if I'd have fasted an extra meal. And God showed me out of, out of the parable of the sower. Ain't nothing wrong with the sower. Wasn't nothing wrong with the seed. The problem was the soil. You wouldn't receive the sower. And you wouldn't receive the seed. Ah, you, you, you don't think so. Who, who would be a better preacher than Jesus? You don't want me to preach. Ain't nobody going to out preach Jesus. But yet Jesus went to a place. And when he preached it, they didn't receive it. And he did not many mighty miracles. Because they wouldn't receive it. They kept looking at the field. And they said, that's the carpenter. That's Mary's boy. He went to Nazareth High School. He attended the Nazareth Church of God. Ain't nothing good going to come out of Nazareth. They didn't know. But if you receive the treasure... Am I helping anybody? Can I show you something? The prophetic word don't always make sense. It's going to be much longer. We're going to activate this. The prophetic word may not always make sense to your intellect. Okay, blind man. 
going to put mud on your eyes and go wash. And if you do, you'll come back sealed. That ain't going to make sense. Lame man, take up your bed and walk. That ain't going to make sense. Take the jawbone of an ass, Samson, and kill a thousand men. That don't make no sense. Gideon, you want the fleece to be dry and everything else wet. And then you want the fleece to be wet and everything else dry. That don't make no sense. Sometimes things don't make sense. But the word of God is not directed to your senses. God is aimed at your spirit so that I receive it in my spirit even though it don't make sense in my head. Let me show you something. Out of 2 Kings chapter 6. Let me just read it, okay? Benadad, king of Syria, gathered all the hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. There was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for 80 pieces of silver. <laughs> Sound like a government shutdown. I'm sorry. And uh, that's mean. That's mean. I'm sorry. I'll take it back. I'm just trying to have a little fun at somebody else's expense. Can't we all just get along? Um, and the fourth part of a, <laughs> of a cab of, of dung, dove's dung for five pieces of silver, about a pint of, of dove, you know what? Yeah. And, and the king of Israel was passing by the wall, and there cried a woman to him saying, Help my Lord, O king. He said, If the Lord don't help you, how can I help you? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? He said, Honey, we done tapped into all our resources. We ain't got nothing to help you with. And the woman began to explain her dilemma. Here it is. She says, The woman that I live with said, yeah, Give me your son. We're going to eat him today and we'll eat my son tomorrow. So we boil my son today. We got ready to get around the table the next day. She done hit her son. And that's fighting words. First, okay. But watch this. And, 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 and it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes. And he passed by the wall and the people looked. And behold, he's in sackcloth. Ashes. Then he said, God do so and more also to me, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day tomorrow. He said, I'm going to kill Elisha. He said, Elisha the one brought this mess on us. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Why is it the man of God always gets blamed for trouble? The man of God wasn't the cause for the trouble. The man of God is the one that's going to bring the feast. You missed it. The man of God didn't bring this famine. Sin brought the famine. But the word of God is going to bring the feast. Now, here's Elisha. He says, chapter 7, verse 1. Then Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Now, now who said it? Elisha, but whose word was it? You see, Elisha is the field, but the word of God is the treasure. And if you don't accept Elisha the field, you don't get the treasure, the word of God. Oh, Lord Jesus, I'm preaching better than you clapping. So Elisha says, I'm going to speak a word. If you receive it as from a man of God, guess what? He said, tomorrow this thing is going to be over. This time tomorrow. And a measure of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. He said, what is lacking, what is scarce today will be in abundance tomorrow. Watch this. Here's understanding, chapter 7, verse 2. Then the Lord on whom the king did lean said, yeah, if God put windows in heaven. So you better be careful who you lean on, your understanding or the spirit. It's, it's getting quiet on, on me. Are you, are you still here? Yeah, if God put, and, and Elisha said, wait a minute, you, you wouldn't receive the field, and you ain't going to be here for the treasure. Guess what? There are four lepers that are going, going out saying, why say we're here till we die? God amplifies their footsteps. The enemy hears and they run, leaving the fried chicken and the cornbread and the collard greens. No, when you've been eating donkey head and dove dung and you hear there's a run on fried chicken, cornbread, and collard greens, you know they're going to be a stampede. They're going to be a stampede. And guess, who, guess who's guarding the gate? 
understanding. Come on, church. You better not let understanding be guarding your gate. Because understanding, you got to trample up under your feet some understanding sometimes. And so he didn't get to eat of it. But here's where I want to take you. I want to take you now to the story. And I know I'm going backward, but catch this. I want to show you how that when God sends a word and you receive it, here we go. Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 17. Five minutes and then we're going to pray for you. There had been a three and a half year drought because of the famine. And the man of God, Elisha, he doesn't feel the famine like everybody else feels it. Because the people of God have a source. I've lost you. We have a source when everything else is shut down. Come on, come on, church, help me. Check it, check him out. Watch this. Watch this. I'm gonna simplify it. I won't read it all. So guess what? He is at the brook called Cherith. And uh, ain't no water for nobody else, but he got his feet in the water. Ah. And Elisha putting on weight during famine. And, and the scripture says two times a day, morning and evening, ravens become caterers. And they bring him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. Now, I know it wasn't a ham biscuit because he was a Jew. I know it wasn't a sausage biscuit, so I'm, I'm going to say it was a chicken biscuit. So two times a day, he gets a chicken biscuit. He, get, he, he calls up room service. Come on, stay with me. He calls up room service. And uh, ravens bring him a chicken biscuit for breakfast And he gets him a chicken biscuit H Have you ever wondered where the biscuits come from? Huh? If, if there's a famine Where did these biscuits come from? You, you don't want you don't want You're not playing with me Where did the biscuit come from? Elisha didn't know But God knows where to find the biscuit Come on somebody I almost did a blues brother rubber biscuit Help me, Lord Jesus. I'm about to go crazy. Ah, help, help me. That's going way back, y'all. Oh, Lord Jesus. So even when, <laughs> even when I don't know where to find the biscuit, God knows where to find the biscuit. I wish you'd lean over and tell somebody, God knows where the biscuits are. You may not know where your next meal's coming from, but God does. You may not know where your rent's coming from, but God does. You may not know where your mortgage is coming from, but God does. Ain't that good? Now, the Bible says, stay with me. Got to hurry. The Bible says that the brook dries up. And God says, I want you to go to Zarephath Zeraf because I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. Now, God doesn't tell Elijah what this woman looks like. It is call and response. It's based on if she accepts the field, she's going to get the treasure. I wish somebody would help me. He said, because I'm going to challenge her faith. He goes up and he says, I want something to drink. It wasn't about water because she never made it to get the water. By the way, it hadn't rained in three and a half years and water is the most precious thing in town. The Bible says, as she's going to fetch it, watch this, he pushes her faith and says, hey, by now I've usually had me a chicken biscuit. I want you to make me a biscuit. Now listen to how, how doubt starts talking. Well, me and my son, I just got a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. We're gathering sticks. We're going to make us a little fire. We're going to eat. And then we're going to die. Now that's doubt talking. Huh? But, but listen to what Eli Elijah says. Hey, guess what? Meal, oil, put them together, make a biscuit. Come on, church. He says, if you will accept the word that I'm putting on you, and you'll accept the field, I'm going to unlock the treasure. 
Watch this. Because if you will take me as a man of God. Now if you ignore the field. Then you and your boy are going to die. Because I'm bringing a treasure. And you can accept me. Or you can reject me. But remember I told you out of Matthew 10. If you reject me. You reject him that has sent me. And every once in a while a man of God will come. To get you out of your family. And you can roll your eyes and say I don't like him. And I ain't listening to him. And you will die. But every once in a while God will test you. And if you'll say you know what. I don't like the way he screams. And he sweats too much. But I'm going to take the word that's in his mouth. And I'm going to apply it. Elijah said you and your family will eat many days. She went and did, and the Bible said they ate until, watch this, until Elijah spoke and called for it to rain. When this thing started, brothers and sisters, Elijah told Ahab, it won't rain until I tell it to rain. Because I am the spiritual authority over the region. God, if you get this, you're going to look at your man of God different. And when you set up under him, you're going to start understanding if he calls for rain, rain's coming. If he calls for healing, healing's coming. If he calls for revival, revival's coming. Am I right? Elijah said it won't rain until I call for it to rain. Here's where I'm going to close you. Elijah was a man of like passion. Elijah was a man of like passion. Elijah was just like me. Elijah had some good days and some bad days. Elijah had some days he calling down fire and he had some days he wanted to get out of ministry. But he still, even though the, the field was weak, he still had a treasure to speak. In the th Here it is. I'm closing. Get ready. I want y'all to get ready to do that second song. I'm going to lay hands on everybody in the building that, that wants it. Don't sound like it's going to take long. <laughs> going to be a short line tonight, y'all. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe you're getting worked up. I don't know. I hope. Numbers chapter 6 verse 22. Watch this. I'm going to put this together for you. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto Aaron and to his sons saying, saying that I want you to speak a blessing to the people of God over them saying, 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 the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine on you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and shall put my name. Don't get ahead of me. Back that up if you would sit again. Put my name on them. Somebody say, put, put my, name my name on them. On them. they got to get past it because this word came from Moses to Aaron. It didn't come from God to Aaron. But Aaron had to receive it as God's word. God spoke to Aaron. Or God, God spoke to Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron. Aaron spoke to the people. God didn't ever speak to the people. It always came through a channel. And if you don't receive it as such, you miss out on the blessing. God said, you tell Aaron, let Aaron tell the people that he's going to put. Somebody say, put. Put my name on them and I'll bless them. When he puts my name on them, I will bless them. Put is a physical application. It's the same word out of Exodus. Put the blood. On the doorpost and the lintel. Are you here? Now, Numbers chapter 22 where Sister Kim was. Balak said to Balaam, I want you to curse the people. He said, I have received a commandment to bless and not to curse. Ah, here it is, Numbers 23, 5. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth. Uh, and he said once I put the word on them keep on reading down and it says a witch can't take it off of you a warlock can't take it off of you that once the spiritual authority has put a word on you it cannot be reversed 
long as you stay in covenant with God long as you stay in covenant with your man of God there is no enchantment that can reverse it have you ever put anything on hold I used to call it layaway I think they're bringing it back watch this you put it on hold they put your name in a big black magic marker hold for Roy Tucker put my name on and everybody in Sears gets to see it it's mine hadn't been delivered but it's mine you didn't hear me because they put my name on it yeah you didn't hear what I said tonight I'm going to put his name on my people Ah, ah, yeah. And you might not get it tonight, but it's yours. It's got your name on it. And what I want you to do is go home and put it on your kids. They may still be cussing, fussing, flipping, and tripping. But guess what? At the end, it's going to speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Stand up, I'm going to quit. Don't let your mind mess you up tonight. Just take it as the Bible explains it. That Aaron put the name of God on his people. And God said, when I see my name, I'm going to bless them. My face is going to shine on them. I put a word in Balaam's mouth. To put on the people. Tonight, I put, if you're in covenant with God, you're in covenant with your, your spiritual leader, not just me, but maybe from another church, you're, you're in covenant with your spiritual authority. We can put that blessing, spoken blessing. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Watch this. Stay with me. Stay focused right now. Focus. Focus real strong. I had a meeting Wednesday with our city councilman about our property. See what, what the city might offer to help us with the upfit. And for about two to three weeks, I ain't been feeling right. Wasn't nothing y'all done? So don't look so guilty. Nobody said nothing. No, no. I've been feeling uneasy in my spirit. And I woke up Wednesday. First lady of verify, I would told her, I said, I'm sorry. This, I just know there's something. I'm just not, I'm not clicking. There's something, there's something out of line, and I, I couldn't put my finger on it. So, so Wednesday. I go and I meet the city councilman. I'm not going to tell you his name. I'm not going to tell you his name because I don't want him to get in trouble if this gets out. You know, separation of church and state kind of stuff. While I was on vacation, I dreamed two dreams. They were not consecutive nights. It was like a, maybe a, a, a Monday and then a Thursday. Both of them had snakes in it. And, and in, the, in the first dream, I, it was a half a snake. It was dead. And in the dream, listen to me. Just wild crazy. Just hear me out. See if it don't make sense. And in, in, the, in the dream, it was half a snake. The, the upper half. The head down halfway. Cut in half. And I picked it up. And in the dream, I, I heard, it's dead. It ain't going to hurt you. So I picked it up. I'd run over with the lawnmower, just picked it up and threw it away. Which is a dream, because I ain't even picking up a dead snake. That's when I called a shovel brigade. So a couple nights later, I woke first lady up with this one. I dreamed that there was a snake on my right hand. Hand of authority, power. I believe when the serpent wrapped itself around Paul's hand, it was his right hand. 
okay? Hand of authority, hand of ministry. Um, and in the dream, I saw this snake wrapping itself around my right hand. And in the dream, I remember saying, it's not poisonous, but I don't want it just going crazy, crawling all over me. So I'm going to put my hand, and it kept squirming. And it, and it squirmed. And I, you ever had one of those dreams where you felt it? I mean, you felt it enough to wake up? Am I telling the truth? I, I, I slung that thing and sat straight up in the bed. And I actually physically did what I did in the dream. I slung it off my arm. I, and it was so real to me, Brother Ethan, until I started looking around to make sure there wasn't one in the motel room. And I almost beat the stuffing out of my computer cord. Because I saw, you know, something black curled up over in the corner. I, hey! That was a real show enough dream. And I come back, and, and I, something don't feel right, something don't feel right, something don't feel right, something don't feel right. I preached a couple of Sundays, something didn't, didn't, didn't feel right. Good church. Nobody would know it but me. Something didn't feel right. I woke up Wednesday morning. I told Janice, I said, I'm just going through that right now. Something's not, something. So I go. And I have the meeting with the city councilman. Stay with me. And the city councilman, I tell him, I've been here 16 years. I ain't going nowhere. I told him what we do in the community and what we want to do in the future. I said, we done spent over a million dollars on this property. I said, we're going to spend two more before it's over. You know what he said to me? I couldn't believe it was coming from a city councilman. He said, preacher wrestle that serpent to the ground I said oh my God I got in the car I went home I said honey I feel different and it didn't dawn on me I didn't know I didn't know it was still it still did not register with me why I felt so bad but now I feel so good until I'm standing right over here crying and praying in the Holy Ghost on Friday night. And God spoke to me standing right here. He said, I had given you the word from heaven. Your councilman gave you the permission on earth. He said, now heaven and earth has lined up. Now when you speak it, it will come down. Ah, I know that it defies your mind. But God is saying heaven and earth's got to line up. You got to speak a thing on earth before God can honor it in heaven. Don't look at me and tell me I can't pull it down. The devil is a liar. Principalities and powers. The rulers of the darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high place. Spirit of suicide coming down. Spirit of depression coming down. Spirit of alcoholism Spirit of drug addiction Spirit of homosexuality Spirit of pornography We're going to wrestle it to the ground Not by might Not by power But by the spirit of the Lord To every one of you That received the field and the treasure I said preacher I want you to put that name on me. I want what's on the head to run down to the body. I want you as Aaron to speak the blessing of God on my life. I want you to come and I want you to get in this aisle right here. If it's two of you or all of you. I want you to line up. Members, visitors. Look at this. I need all our under shepherds, everybody on hand. It ain't going to take long. Mm. Now, I want you to watch me because there will be a time bef before this process is over. I'll be praying for you two and three and four at a time. It ain't about how long I pray for you. I don't have to pray long. Now, uh because the anointing is here and it's on the spiritual authority of the house and we're going to put the name and the blessing on you somebody say it's my season for a breakthrough it's my season for a turnaround it's my season 
for a shift. Now I want you to raise your hand and begin to praise him. I want you to sing that through one time, and then I'm going to start praying for you. Come on, I want you to start engaging your spirit, man, and start disengaging your mind. Come on, come on, begin to worship him. This is the sound of praise. This is the sound of praise. Yeah, 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 ye
Hey, come on, man of God. And put it on a Keep on coming. Hurry, my God, my God, my God. Reke paro re ama shaka. Hula bara hane re baba mo shaka ta. Hey, ay ay ay. Hula bara na na ba ho shaka ta. Hula na 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 ba ba mo shaka ta. Right here. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. There's some other people put some stuff on you. Other people spoke words over you. But I put something on you tonight. It cancels out all of the words. I put on you the name of the Lord. Ah. You spirits that wrestle against her. Yeah. Loose her. Loose her. Loose her. Loose her mind. Loose her emotions. There. There. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, set your people free. Shule le 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 you are marked to rise. You are marked to win. You are marked to succeed. Somebody shout. I got it right here. Take it. Hulama, you feeling it? Mark it. Brother Thomas, you're marked for a blessing. I feel Take it, take it. I put it on you. As you're covering, I put it on you. I speak a blessing. I speak it in the name. Who I feel it. Take it. I put it on you. I put it on you. I put it on you. Put it on you. I put the name of God on you. Who shake up papa? Oh, 
You put it in my mouth and I put it on your child. I put the word on you that he's put in me. I put the name of the Lord on you. I put the name of the Lord on your house. I put the name of the Lord on your children. I put the name of the Lord on your ministry. Somebody shout yeah! it over you. I speak it over you. You gotta receive. Come here, Jordan. I put the name of God on you. I speak over you in the name of Jesus. Somebody praise him in the house. It ain't about my hand. It's about his word. Watch this. I save this to the end. After Balaam is talking to Balak. And he said, God, have put, God has put a word in my mouth. And if I speak the word to bless, it cannot be reversed. Watch this. Here is where this verse comes in. I want you to go home and read it. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that would lie or the son of man that would repent. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. God said, if Balaam said it, I, I am going to honor the word. And I won't take it back. As long as you stay in covenant with God, as long as you don't cut corners, don't take the easy way out, as long as you keep your integrity and your character intact, as long as you stay faithful to God, listen to me, you don't have to worry about God keeping His word. Let me tell you something, I'm going to get out of here. The word of God don't have an expiration date on it like milk. Just because it don't happen in the next 30 days don't mean that it goes sour. God will honor his word. Does anybody believe that? Anybody believe me? 
Well, you're, you're wrong. You shouldn't believe me. You ought to believe the word that I speak from God. So now let me, I, I done tricked you. Now you ain't going to say nothing. Does anybody believe him? Because I don't want you believing me. You hear me? I don't want you believing me. I want you only believing if I speak the truth. I speak the truth and not lie. And God will honor his word. Over your house. Over your mind. Not by my feelings. Sometimes I feel like a nut and sometimes I don't. Let me talk to you for a second. Don't go by your feelings because they'll change on you based on the circumstance you hear. Because I'm going to be honest, there have been times I felt like it was going to be all right. And it wasn't all right for a long time. And then there were times I felt like it ain't ever going to work. And God worked it overnight. But what you've got to do, brothers and sisters, you've got to keep putting that word out there. Regardless of what you feel or don't feel. You need to go home. I'm telling you, this is how this chain of command works. You need to say, my man of God put a word on me and I'm putting it on my house. I'm putting it on my sick husband. I'm putting it on my sinner kids. And nothing may change, but it's put on hold. It's, it's got their name on it. Might not take possession of it right away. But the name is on it. I put the name on it. I'm not trying to work you up. I'm going to get paid whether you shout or not. In fact, I got paid this morning before I preached my first sermon. Bad idea. Bad, bad idea. For y'all to put my check on my desk and you ain't even heard me preach. That's a whole lot of trust, ain't it? That's a lot of trust. Trusting after 16 years, he ain't going to go crazy on me now. I'm trying to set you up, church. God told me this week. He said, I want you to preach to them like they're already there. So you'll hear me talk about marching around walls. You're going to hear me talk about Expanding regions and territories like we're already sitting there. God said, you got to preach to them like they're already there. Come on, come on. Because in the spirit we are. The promise is already, he's already put his name on us. May take some time. But it's going to happen. Church, we are closer than we've ever been in this thing. I won't go into, into all of this, but I'm telling you, God is blessing this house. By the way, the city councilman, after he said, wrestle that serpent to the ground, he said, I'm your man on the city council. He gave me his business card with his cell number. He said, call me. I'll put him in the phone within 30 minutes after, after saying goodbye. He said, if you need anything, call me. I don't know how the man believes. All I knew is heaven and earth need to line up a little bit more. He said, I'm going to vote for you when you need things on the city council. Are you here? Because when God puts his name on you, ain't nobody going to reverse it. No weapon formed against you will prosper trying to get you aggressive I'm trying to get you ready so that when you do ride by over there you start speaking into the area into the atmosphere he said the councilman standing right here he said you do know when you get here they're going to leave all the pimps and pushers I said you got that right I said we ain't scared Pastor Sean was there in my tent I told him I said we ain't scared of them I said, my church will come over here and we will lock horns with any demon in this area. Because I know where we are assigned. I said, we could have run. Hmm. 
I said, but this is our assignment. This is our territory. And we're taking it back. Then he started saying, talking to me about Eastland Mall. I wanted to say, give me that one too. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't want, I didn't want to go crazy on him. I wanted to say, give it to us. I'm, exactly, exactly. I'm t- you, don't get me started. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I preach big because we've got a big God. And ain't nothing I can preach God can't do. As long as I stay in His Word and His will, ain't nothing. Let me leave you with this. I will not withhold any good thing from them that walk after, after Him uprightly. Lean over and tell somebody, His name is on me. Some of, some of you may be tested this week. You may feel the exact opposite of what you're feeling right now. But guess what? Ain't none of that can take his name off you. Ain't none of that can rewrite his word. Amen? I'm going to ask you to stand. It's been an awesome day, praise and place. Thank you to all of our guests, those that came in and joined in ministry with us. Thank you for, for, for letting me preach deep. And hard and push on you and challenge your faith. I want to be challenged. Don't you want to be challenged? I want to put some spiritual muscle on. Amen. Don't forget on your way out, I'm going to ask some ushers to go to the doors. If you have anything that you can contribute to Guatemala Medical Missions, please. I mean, a, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, all of it will help. If you want to help with the outfits, see First Lady, Wednesday night Bible study, Brother Ethan doing an awesome job. He got to, he got to revving my motor up Wednesday before last. I jumped up in here and took over. I'm sorry I couldn't stand it. Would you believe he taught the same thing I was studying all day? And I said, ah, 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 ah. let me get out there and, 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 and get some relief. Hmm. So God's doing some awesome things in prayer Friday from 6 to 7. We're gearing up for our fall festival November the 9th from 12 to 4. We're going to have vendors. We're trying to work it out where, where just about every department is going to have a, some time to showcase the singers. We're going to be able to sing. We want to work it out. We want to get a platform. Put some sound equipment up. Let our musicians and singers sing. and Let our... Let our, our our silent witness and our, our drama and all, let all of them, you know, four hours just rotate around a little bit. Let everybody know what we're about. Amen? The revival starts Sunday morning, November the 10th. Amen? Don't get your mind on Thanksgiving and Christmas too soon. We got revival first. I know some of y'all done looked at the calendar and said, my God, that's too close to Thanksgiving. I can't believe we're having revival. We have revival when I feel we have revival. I don't, I don't, have, I don't take a vote how many of y'all can be here. I don't do that. When I hear from the Lord it's time to have it, we're going to have it. And if y'all come, come. If you can't, you just can't. Because I ain't ever going to get everybody together. Amen. I get this side can come, this side's working. So we just have it when we can have it. Amen. And, and, and if it works right, then we all get blessed. Don't forget our meeting Saturday, 10 o'clock, going to be our council. And then we're going to have uh, department heads at 11 then 12, we're asking the uh, under-shepherds. Then at 1, all workers to come. Okay? We're going to have some refreshments laid out for you. It's going to be a good time of structure and talk. And if something's not working in your department, that, that'll be the time for us to talk about it. Amen? I want to hear from my workers. Hello? I want to hear from you. If something, if something needs a little push, I want you, you need to tell us so we can push it. Amen? Come on. Somebody say amen. amen. I didn't work you too hard tonight, did I? Okay, just, just checking. Amen. Minister Matthew is going to close us out in prayer. I love you. I said I love you. <laughs> Ain't nothing worse than throwing love out and not getting none back. Ain't nothing worse than that. Walk around the house, tell first I love you. Do what? That's her phrase. I say, I love you. Oh, I love you too. You know, I'm going to say it until you all say it back. So I love you with all of my heart. I really do. And there's not a better church anywhere for me. 
I said, for me. We fit together. And I appreciate the support, and I, I feel the support, and I feel the unity and the camaraderie. And guess what? It's an awesome time at the praising place. Pray us out if you would, sir. Father, we're thankful, God, to have been in your house tonight. Thank you, Lord, for a time of refreshing, God, and just renewing our spirits. God, and I pray, God, especially that you would, God, give rest and refreshing, God, to our bishop. Lord, pray that you would strengthen him, God, physically, God, against fatigue, against weariness, God, spiritually, emotionally, every way, God, we want to cover him and lift him up in prayer, God, against attack. God, I just ask as we close out and leave here, God, you would keep us all safe as we drive wherever we go, God, get us home safely, God, or our destinations. We trust in you, God, to do a great work in us and through us. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we ask and pray. Thank you.